Welcome to Section 5, Video 1, in which we'll focus on using transitions to increase interactivity with our visualizations. In the past section, we worked on utilizing external data sources. In this video, we'll start by modularizing our JSON var chart we made in Section 4.2 so that we can render and re-render our chart depending on what transitions are underway. Then we'll work through some features that D3 affords users in regards to transitions. With our previous bar chart, in which we paired JSON data with random numbers to give our bars height, let's start by placing the core components into functions that can be called throughout our different transitions. Let's separate the random number generator. The randomizer will take the data value containing our JSON called data and set up a random number pairing whenever it's called. Note that our code inside of the function is identical to our 4.2 code, however now that it's in a function we can call it whenever we'd like. Next let's wrap our code that creates our SVG and bar chart into a function called render. We can go ahead and call these two functions at the bottom of the code, and what will be our initial rendering. If we were to load the code in our browser now, we would see the same output as our previous code, but now that it's modularized, we can call it again in different ways when users interact with our chart. Next, let's jump into our transitions. For the first transition, let's wait for a mouse over event on any of our recs, and then change the fill color, as well as the height and y values over the course of 2,000 milliseconds, or 2 seconds. Note that we've included this section inside of our JSON callback function that contains our entire script, yet outside of our render function, as we may want to render a new bar chart separately of our transitions. Walking through the previous code, we've used the d3selectAll method to wait for a mouse over event on the rect. We then pass an anonymous function in which we use the this selector, or whatever bar the mouse is over, to begin a linear transition over two seconds to our new fill, height, and y values. Note that we've pretty much copy and pasted the values from our height and y values from the initial rendering of the chart, but we changed times three to times four, providing a might as well be random height value. While transitioning the height in this manner may not be particularly useful for viewing our chart or sharing data, we'll just use it for illustrative purposes to show how to work our way around some of the features of D3 transitions. Now let's chain our dot on mouse out method. The form of this section is pretty similar to the mouse over event, but leaves one question. Now that we've dynamically changed the data of our recs, how do we access our old attribute values to return them to normal on mouse out? The height, y value, and fill color of our bars have been altered during a mouse over, so we're going to need to insert some new attributes into our original rendering so that we can access the original values in our mouse out transition. Let's head up to the end of the bar attributes section on line 66 in the original render call. Here you can see we've added a few new values. We've set each rex ID to the value of the color name contained in the original data, so that even once the quote fill value of our rect has been changed on a mouse over, we can assign the original fill value again. We've then created two other new attributes for all of our recs, one which stores the original height, and one which stores the original y value. Returning to our mouse out call, we can assign our original attributes by using an anonymous function that selects the rec that the mouse is leaving, or this D3 select this, and then transitions our fill, height, and y values back to what they originally were by returning those attributes of the selected rec. Notice this is a difference between the original mouse over section, in which we simply manipulated our original data call and our mouse out method, in which we've accessed attributes of each individual rect through the select this method. One final event handler will let us reset the chart and utilize our randomizer and render functions. We won't want to chain this to the past two selections because we'll be listening for events on another element, in this case, the SVG. On the double click, we'll select the SVG and remove it. We'll then call our randomizer and render functions again. Let's check out our project in the browser to see if the mouse over, mouse out, and double click events are altering our chart in the way we think it should. Notice that the transition method automatically computes the speed with which elements must be transitioned to fill out the specified duration and ease method. Using linear transitions as an example, the greatest difference between the new and old heights, or new and old colors, the faster the change that must occur relative to the 2000 millisecond duration. With our initial lesson on interactivity completed, let's move on to the next video on some very useful ways in which D3 can help users filter data in visualizations. See you then!